to everyone's favorite crash stage, Generator Room. I don't remember much about this level at all. But it has a color gem, so I have to do it in one shot. Oh, I remember this stage now. This is the first in the dark stage, which... If you don't know what I'm talking about with that, uh... Or no, this isn't the first in the dark stage. This is the first deep mechanical stage. As far as this stage goes, I don't remember it being that difficult. It's just a little confusing, I believe, is the term I would use. Because there's a lot of really weird shit you're expected to do. Wait, did that spawn boxes back near the start? Uh, can I get past this without getting hit? Yes, but now I can't see where I'm jumping. Great. No, it didn't. Okay, so that was a complete waste of time. Good on me. And now I gotta get past this thing again. Or I could just die, you know. <sighs> brilliant. Frickin' brilliant. Okay, let's try this again. Once more without fail, hopefully. Let's get that stupid gem and just get out of here. And yeah, we got Cortex laughing at us in the stage because he knows that I'm an idiot and I screw up. And I just jumped right into the servo bot. Oh my god. Sure! Let's just make the dumbest mistakes possible. One of them must be right! Okay. Once again- you know what? Not okay. This is not okay. I need to stop being a fucking moron. Okay, uh, so don't go back to the start, because there's nothing there. Jump! Okay. And a ton of Anakin too. Oh, it made this. Oh yeah, this. This is a trap. Um, if you stand on this thing for too long, it will fall out from under you. So, yeah, the developers are kind of dicks when it comes to that, but they made this awesome game, so I can't hold it against them. It's just me and my incompetence at figuring this shit out. It really makes it bad. If I would have used my brain earlier, I probably could have deduced that this was happening. Oh my god, some of these jumps are so freaking large. At least you can kill the camera bots. Like, seriously, screw Cortex's stupid helicopter bots. They can't be touched. Another super straightforward Tana Bandicoot stage, so. Hooray for that! Um, now, if I can just do the rest of the stage without dying. Oh, by the way, don't jump down here. I know you can see boxes below, but, uh. Yeah, that's not where you're supposed to go. If you drop there, you instantly die, even though it looks like you could drop down as a shortcut. And I got hit by one of the helicopter bots, because of course I did! Screw the helicopter bots. At least the camera bots can be killed. It's the only pro I will give them. At least they can be hurt. Helicopter bots give you no such fortune. Goody, two helicopter bots going at different timings with a falling platform. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Um. Ah! 
Damn it! You have no idea how badly that stings when you're doing decently well and then one misclick and you have to do the whole stage over again. That is just the most painful thing about Crash Bandicoot. It also highlights just how ridiculously unforgiving these games can be. Like, one misclick. The entire stage over again. Like, really sit down and think about that. Oh, there's no depth perception. I can't tell where he is in terms of physical space. Oh my god, I almost got hit there. I can't believe I got past these assholes and then died to a simple fucking jump. Or no, it's the TNT barrel box. Like. That is annoying on a whole new level because it's not something that you should die to if you're halfway decent at the game. And I did it again because I'm a fucking asshole! Mm, okay. This is really, really shit. Like you wouldn't believe. Okay. Oh, why is it this level that's giving me trouble? Like, why? Why is it this level that's giving me trouble? I don't remember the generator room being this difficult. Like, I remember it being somewhat of a roadblock, but not this majorly difficult. Then again, I don't... No, I did get the gem in my, in my PlayStation 4 playthrough, so... It took me a couple tries, but it wasn't this difficult. Oh my god! Oh my god! No. That was way too fucking close. So what you just witnessed there was, uh... Remember before how I said that Crash Bandicoot's jump arc isn't quite as on point as it was in the original game? Uh, Crash Bandicoot's hitbox is also a cylinder in this game, or like... No, it's an oval. Instead of a square. So what you just witnessed there was my hitbox landed on the platform, but it landed at the very edge, so it wasn't sure if I was on or off. Luckily, it corrected itself to on, but that could have gone really bad. What have we got? Okay, so apparently when he's up, he's in my way. Okay, there. I got through with Aku Aku this time, so... Hopefully I can keep him for this one section where I apparently can't do this box break properly. Now, can I get 
get it right this time? Yeah, this time I get it right. I have Aku Aku, so of course I didn't need him this time. That's just the way this game works. Oh, man. It's gonna be one of these, isn't it? Okay, it was just the one jump, so... I can live with that. Uh, okay, that's ice. I can jump on that. It's not a major threat. Just have to avoid getting pushed off. Yes, the gem! I finally beat it! Thank you! Oh! Yes! Hey, everybody! In the last episode, we managed to get to Toxic Waste, so... Why not? Let's just continue this nightmare. Uh... Toxic Waste. Yeah. This is another one of those color gem stages. We've been getting a lot of those lately, you may have noticed, and... This one I was stuck on for a while, but there is an easy way to figure it out and beat it. So, Toxic Waste is one of a kind, and it's got a very simple gimmick. These guys throw barrels at you. This may be familiar if you play Donkey Kong, and that's pretty much what I can compare it to. It's like a forward-facing version of the Donkey Kong arcade game. Honestly, it doesn't look that difficult, and it's not yet. The first three or so uh, runs of this are actually fairly easy. It's when you get to the fourth and the fifth one that the level starts ramping up. So, now that we made it to the fourth one, we got bouncing barrels! Now believe it or not, there actually is an easy way to know where not to stand. Um, in the end stained version only, they added in these small indents on the ground. They are where the barrels bounce. So as long as you're not standing on one of those, you won't get hit. In the original game, they didn't exist. There was no indication of where the barrels would land. You had to figure it out by memory. And considering how hard this stage is, getting it wrong was basically a death. And there's a ton of Bandicoot minigame here now. Uh, in the original, I don't think there was one. And yeah, that's that. Okay, then. I got the blue gem and I beat the stage. That's toxic waste for him. And now I believe we have a boss fight with Pinstripe Potteroo. Or Potteroo, yeah, whatever. Uh, I'm gonna save just because I don't want to have to do toxic waste again. And with that, we got this boss fight to do. So yeah, he's got a gun! A Tommy gun, to be precise. And you think this would make him really intimidating? But... Pinstripe Potteroo is actually one of the easier bosses in the game up to this point. As stupid as that sounds. 
All you have to do is hit him when he's trying to reload. Which is actually a lot easier than it sounds. As long as you're behind these chairs, he can't hit you. And yeah, that was Pinstripe Potter. I don't know why they made him so easy for this point. Like, you'd think he would be hard because he's got a gun and all that stuff. You'd think he would be difficult. But he's not, for some reason. He's actually really easy. And now we've made it to the high road, which makes up for the difficulty lacking for the boss, because this is probably one of the hardest stages in the game. So let's do this then. Yeah, they give you lives right off the start, and uh... Yeah, this is a thing. And I died right away because, yeah, you can't tell where the bridge planks are. I think the Wumpa Fruit are supposed to identify with where they are. But, seriously, fuck this shit. And there's a few boxes for you right after I think there's another plank here, yeah. And with that, let's begin the journey of the high road and all of its horrible horribleness. Because this stage can go fuck itself. Oh, uh... Yeah, I didn't really mention that the last time I was in, uh... The Road to Nowhere. Uh, if you time it right, you can jump on these ropes. Which... You can use it to basically just bypass everything. Uh, the only problem with doing that is it's highly unreliable. And if you screw up, it's very easy to fall off the bridge and die, so... If you're gonna do this, be fucking careful, because it's super easy to screw it up. The nice thing about this, like, exploit, though, is the fact that it does make it so that if you kill the tortoises, you're not completely screwed over. But, at the same time, it's really not easy to do. Like, you can slip off super easily. Like, I get the... I get the distinct sense that this is sort of considered, like, cheating in a sense, because it's not the way the developers intended you to do the stage. But it was in the original game, and they didn't remove it from this version, so... They expect you to know that it's there. Oh my god. And it's not like it's easy. It's super easy to actually jump over the rope and off the bridge, so... I wouldn't even call it a reliable exploit. It's actually easier to get yourself killed doing this than it is to just do the platforming. Like, But for shit like this, like, here they're gonna make you jump on the tortoises and bounce across the cliff. Fuck that, I'm doing this, like... This is my method. That worked out pretty well, actually. Okay. And yeah, for this part, uh, I can't make it up onto the bridge strings anymore, so now I actually have to do this. Oh, there was a plank there. I, I actually couldn't see it because of the broken planks.
Okay, um... I'll accept that. I know that there's gonna be a lot of people in the comments who are probably just like, That's cheating! You didn't play the stage properly, but... You know what? I did it! It's done, so... Yeah. I really don't care. I beat it. That, that's all that matters. Unfortunately for me, though, I can't cheese this level. I cheesed the high road, but there's no cheesing slippery climb. And you see that there? It has a color gem, which means you have to do it in one shot. <laughs> oh man. Okay, um this is post commentary for uh Slippery Climb's first run because uh during the Slippery Climb run I actually didn't say anything. There was literally no commentary, and I felt it was a little silly to leave it completely blank. Uh the recording of this is ramped up to 300% speed. That's kind of how slow this is. Um, Slippery Climb is just a really, really difficult stage in general, so... It's one of those stages where if you take it calmly and go slow, you're more likely to win. But on my first attempt here, I end up screwing up at this point right here. Yeah, it's gonna be one of these ones. And, yeah, I don't think you're gonna get much commentary on this level. Because this one kind of requires you to pay almost 100% attention. There is so little room for error in this level, it's not even funny. So, yeah, like I just said in uh, the, like, small little bit that you got there, I didn't do much commentary in this, and the difficulty is pretty darn precise. I wouldn't say this is the hardest level in Crash Bandicoot. I would still say that the high road is tougher than this. And of course, Stormy Ascent, but that's a DLC level that wasn't in the original game. Um, it was cut from the original game due to being too difficult. But Slippery Climb, it's definitely hard. Like, I wouldn't say this is easy. This takes a lot of practice and a lot of patience to get through. If you're trying to just rush through it, you're much more likely to make a mistake, which is what makes the time trial relic in this stage so damn difficult. But if you're just running through it, like, regularly, getting the gem isn't actually as hard as people make it out to be, because, like, you just take your time. You don't have to rush through the stage. The enemies in the stage are ridiculously easy to avoid. Like, none of them are really that threatening. The vulture bouncing can be seem a little tricky at first, but they're all at the exact height you need them to be. So, if you can't make these jumps, basically that's your own fault, you just need to practice. All the regular enemies in the stage are easy to avoid. Uh, worth noting that this Brio minigame was not in the original Crash Bandicoot. That was added in this version to make the stage slightly tougher. So, yeah, you can thank whoever decided to throw this in for an extra bit of difficulty. Although it does make the stage a little bit more, like, entertaining, I guess. The Brio stage isn't really that difficult, it's easier than the other ones, and once you've beaten that, you're pretty much at the end aside from these last couple jumps and one last scientist guy blocking your way, so... It's not the worst challenge, but it can be very difficult. Enjoy. Oh! 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 oh yeah! Oh! Oh, you have no idea how good that 